Hi, welcome to the motion tracking segment of the After Effects basic training series. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at motion tracking, but more importantly, we're gonna learn what motion tracking is. So, to get started, I have some footage of Los Angeles. And I'm gonna take it and drag it into the make new comp button, let it go, and a new composition is then created with all the same settings as my footage. Now, this shot is a little bit shaky. So what I wanna do is stabilize it. But I don't wanna stabilize the whole shot just from about here to about here. So what I'm gonna do is set my current time indicator about here, hit the letter B as in boy, and that brings the beginning of my work area to that point. I can also trim it by just dragging it. Then I'm gonna to move to about four seconds and hit the letter N. I can also drag the end of the work area as needed. Then I'm gonna right click on this bar and choose trim comp to work area. And that will trim the composition to just that area of the clip. Now let's go ahead and get started motion tracking. So as you can see, this shot is a little bit shaky. So what we can do with motion tracking is get rid of that slight shake. And to do that, we can double click on our footage. And what that does is brings it up in a viewer. Now the composition looks like this and the viewer looks like this. Now when you motion track, you motion track in the viewer, not in the composition view. So if you want to motion track, you need to double click on your footage. So now that we have it up in the viewer, I'm going to choose window tracker controls. And here is the motion tracking controls. What we can do is stabilize motion or track motion. Now these two methods track the footage the same way, but the difference is how the data is used in the final video. Let's go ahead and start tracking this shot. So what we're going to do is stabilize the motion of this shot. So I'm going to click on stabilize motion. And what this does is creates a brand new track point. And what we can do with the track point is click on the inner square and move it around. Now a track point is made up of a few things. The inner square is the track area, which means what to search for from frame to frame. Now the outer area is the search area. So if you have a shaky shot, you want the search area to be large enough so that from one frame to the next, your track area can be found. Now, if you make the search area too large, motion tracking can take a lot longer and be more inaccurate. So you want to make it as small as possible, but be able to search enough for the area to find that track point. Now, the track point works best on a high contrast area, like this corner. And as you can see, when you move it around, it sort of zooms in so you can see a little bit closer. So we want our track area to be on a high contrast point, such as this white corner. And the reason why is tracking analyzes frames to frames. Now, if we were to put this track area on these leaves, it would have a difficult time maintaining that track area because similar areas exist around it. So it might think that this is the area that's supposed to track instead of right here. So you want to have a distinct high contrast point such as this. Now let's find a suitable point to begin stabilizing this shot. So I'm rolling the mouse button out and what I want to do is take my track point and drag it over here and I'm holding down the space bar to drag in my comp since I don't have a lot of room to work. Now I'm going to move my first track point to the bottom of this gap sign. Seems like a pretty high contrast area. Then I'm going to zoom out. Now this shot also rotates slightly. So the tracker controls also have an option to analyze the rotation. And how this works is you create another track point. Now how this works is each track point analyzes the tracking area that you designate. And then depending on how much this point pivots from track point number one, it creates a rotation value that is used to stabilize the footage. So what we want to do is find a track point that is kind of on the same plane as this building. So what I'm going to do is move my second track point up to the corner of one of these lights. And so now we've created this line from one point to the other. Now that we've set up our track points, we can begin to analyze the footage. And to do that, we're going to click on the Analyze Forward button. So as you can see, the data is processed and data has now been collected in the timeline. Now, we started tracking in the middle of the piece of footage. So what we need to do now is track backwards from this first point. 
And it's okay if the track overlaps, it'll just replace the track points with the new ones. So I'm gonna click on the Analyze Backwards button, and that will finish tracking the shot from start to finish. Okay, now we've tracked the data, so what can we do with it? Well, we want to apply the data to the footage. So I'm gonna click Apply, and it's gonna ask X and Y, and we're gonna choose OK. And now back in the main composition, the viewer sort of closes out momentarily and goes back to the composition. We can now scrub through our footage, and you can see by looking right here that the footage stays perfectly stable. Now, one side effect of motion tracking is that we get these black bars on the side. And the reason for that is that because the motion tracking data followed this one point on the gap sign, it moves the layer left and right in order to maintain that point, thereby stabilizing it. However, we get some black edges depending on how much the layer has to be offset in order for it to maintain that position. So the solution there, or the simple solution, is to simply scale the footage up. So with the layer selected, I hit the letter S, bringing up our scale option, and I'm just gonna increase this to about 110. That gets rid of the black on the edge, and now we have a perfectly stable shot, and we can preview that through the time controls. Now, let's take a look at another example. What I'm gonna do is take the same Los Angeles footage drag it into yet another composition. And we're gonna go ahead and do a sign replacement on this gap sign. So we received a letter from gap, they're telling us to take the sign down, we're getting sued, lawyers are coming to the house, you know, throwing bricks through your window. So we wanna go ahead and take care of this gap sign. So what I wanna do first is create a new solid. And what we're gonna do is basically just black this out. So I'm gonna take this color picker and basically we're gonna make a color solid that's the same color as this gap sign. I'm gonna choose OK. And so now we've created our layer. I'm gonna just shut it off for a second. And what we wanna do is double click on our Los Angeles movie, bring it up in the viewer so we can begin tracking it. So I'm gonna double click. Here's our viewer. And remember, we're working in a brand new composition. And in this case, we're gonna track motion, not stabilize. So I'm gonna choose track motion. And for this, we're gonna choose the track type Perspective Corner Pin. And what this does is brings up four track points that are all kind of hooked together. And then what I'm gonna do is line each of these track points up with this gap sign. So I'm gonna drag this one and line it up with the bottom corner. I'm gonna drag this one, line it up with this bottom corner. That one and that one. Now, one of the cool things about motion tracking is you do not have to track the point you're looking to calculate. For example, this track point number four is gonna track this point right here, right in the middle of the track area. And as you can see, it's gonna create the coordinate of about 600 by 400 if you look into my info palette here. Now, that's all fine, but what if this point was all black or somehow obscured, but just next to it was another point we could track? Well, in this case, we have this cross into the structure of the building. And what I can do is drag the track area to this cross. But the important thing is that our track point needs to be lined up with the gap sign. So what I can do is drag the point, and you can see the mouse sort of changes into this point grabber. And I'm going to move it right over here. So our tracking is going to happen here, but the position data is going to be applied here. So it sort of offsets it automatically. Now. You want to be careful because if this was, say, on the other side of the building here, the tracking data wouldn't be perfect. So make sure it's on the same plane that you're trying to track. And also be aware that if we move the track point, it moves relative as well. 